records. And you can have a record of it if you want. Um, again, you can um, share any information that you want to share in the chat. If there's resources that you want to share with people, that's cool. Um, and there's not a lot of us today, so I'm going to go um, kind of go around like I usually do, just do kind of a quick introduction of yourself um, and maybe something, uh, yourself, your business, and something that you're, you want to bring a challenge to us that you need help with. Um, of course, always, if you have ideas for someone, share that. Um, and then, of course, if you receive an idea, just say thank you for receiving the idea. For those who don't know me, I'm Gina Tremarco. I own Carolina Improv Company and Pivot 10 Results. Um, our theater is closed right now. We're still trying to figure out what that's going to look like, um, <laughs> when we're going to get open. And then... Um, Pivot 10 Results is our training um, training company, our corporate training company. So we are currently working on bringing all of our training online right now. So it's a little bit about me, um, my struggles, <laughs> getting open, knowing when I'm going to get open, knowing when I'm going to have cash flow. Um, I do have a pre-approval for the PPP loan. Um, but I don't really know much else. So I was supposed to get more information this week. Um, so hopefully something will come through with that. Um, I did sit on the state of South Carolina's unemployment webinar on Friday for self-employed workers. Um, so if you did not join that call, I do have some information on that um, and some insight on that. And uh, that's about that's about it I got. So let's go to Leslie. I'm gonna unmute you or you can unmute yourself. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Awesome. I'm, I'm Leslie Maloney with DBC Radio. We have five stations in the market. WRNN, Wave 104.1, Energy 92.1, WKZQ and Hank 105.5. Um, I am... Uh, advertising sales executive there. So my challenge has been um, number one, dealing with cancel cancellations, which were very um, accommodating to based on the current environment, um, but also finding those businesses that are still open and operating that might be interested in um, doing any online or on-air advertising. Um, one thing I can say, if you or anybody you know has a business that's open and operating um, on each one of our station websites, there is a banner ad that says open, where you can click on it and put your business information and what it is that you have to offer, what you're doing to accommodate that type of thing. That's awesome. And what's the easiest way to get to, get to your overall, to get to all your stations? Or do you have to go to each station to do that? Yeah, um, I can, I guess I can post in the chat room the names of each station and you can That'd just go great. to each website and do that. Yes, okay. please. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that now. That would be awesome. Thank you, Leslie. Anything else you want to share? Uh, nope. Okay. Nope. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to bounce down to Katrina, who is new on this call. Hi. Hi, I am Katrina White and I'm the general manager at Coastal Grand Mall. So our struggles, of course, is from a landlord perspective is that many of our businesses are having the same struggles that you guys are having. And that's kind of why I wanted to join the group. Um, I don't have any information of which of my tenants have um, gotten approval for the PPP loan. I know a lot of them have applied. Um, you know, and we're also kind of sitting here pretty trying to figure out what it's going to look like when you know, the governor makes his announcement this evening about additional retail stores, some of those restrictions being lifted. So um, we've kept them all open. Um, we've limited the number of doors that we have open, you know, because obviously our staff is reduced, you know, and everything too. But we have a handful of tenants that are, you know, essential tenants, you know, lens crafters, health finders, um, even though they're still only operating, you know, probably emergencies and appointments only. But um, and then uh, others have tried to fight the good fight and fulfill online orders and phone orders and, you know, and everything like that. So, so we're technically kind of open here um, and then just trying to figure out what that's going to look like 
tomorrow and, and the rest of this week. And it's, it's really anybody's guess. So from a staffing standpoint, and I'm sure that my merchants are feeling the same way, how, how do you staff? You know, we really don't know how the public's gonna respond or anything to that, so. And I, I know um, you put on the survey your concern about um, the perspective from, from tenants who occupy space and how that, so that you can get some perspective on that. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they, you know, they may not be in this group, but they're, they're operating businesses just like you guys are. So, um, you know, if, if I'm not hearing from them because, you, you know, they're not, you know, reaching out, they're just, you know, a lot of their employees are just laid off, furloughed, whatever. Um, you know, I want to understand where they're coming from so that we can um, try to work with them and help them get through this. You know, it's just, it's just a bad situation all around. So. Okay, well, I, I definitely have some perspective for you as a tenant of the Myrtle Beach Mall. So we'll... Well, we'll this is Coastal Grand. This is not no, Myrtle Beach Mall. No, no, I know that. But I'm saying that I have perspective as someone yeah. occupying a space. Um, right. So we'll come back around to that. Uh, Elena. You figured out how to unmute it. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Elena Brown. I have um, I own a commercial photography business, which of course right now is shut down because I can't go to any other businesses to take their pictures. And then a couple of uh, other in-person services like teaching, consulting, things like that, which are also shut down. So right now I'm like in the process of figuring out things that I can do online or uh, finding other stuff that I can do to just, uh, you know, bring some income in the door. Cause pretty much all of the events that were supposed to give me some income in 2020 have been canceled. So I'm getting to where, you know, after four weeks, uh, I guess you know who's women naked when the tide goes out and I must be one of those women naked because after four <laughs> weeks I'm already, how am I gonna pay my health insurance? How am I gonna pay for, you know, the rent, which we're talking to someone who's a landlord and I have business rent. I'm not allowed to go to the office, but I still have to pay the rent. And it's like, well, landlord is nowhere to be found and no communication whatsoever and no response to email, no response to phone call. And they're still collecting the rent every month. So, you know, things like that. So I'm trying to kind of, uh, being that um, creative mindset of what can I do, what can I offer online, doing some things through Zoom and some teaching and trying to figure out things that can bring some income in the door. And that's about it. I'm not eligible for anything. I've looked at, <laughs> there's a loophole in every, in every aid system that makes me ineligible. I live in one state and work in another, contractor and self-employed no employees so it's like hey everything i've looked at they're like nope you're ineligible so you know what i gotta figure it out on my own uh elena let me let me ask you a quick question on that on the ppp um did, were you um are you on payroll or are you a, you're no, honest? And that's when I asked, they were like, no, there was no payroll, no, no actual, cause it's a, a brand new businesses. So pretty much everything that was made was reinvested, whatever leftover owner distribution. And so it doesn't really qualify for anything or that's what I've been told that all three, PPP, the disaster assistance, which at the end of the day, $1,000 or $36 ain't gonna yeah. change my life. Yeah. And uh, unemployment said the same thing because it's like the state, well, you live in one state, you work in another and you have such a mix of everything that you can't apply to the state. If you're not denied by the state, you can't apply to the other one. So I'm like, okay, just, it means, put on your big panties and you have to figure out some way to make money. That's pretty much my answer. Yeah. Um, but you have a schedule C, did you have an adjusted gross income on your schedule C? Yeah. Have you, did you try applying? I tried and then I couldn't get past some of the questions I called and I told them the person on the phone, what, you know, what questions and they were like, Oh, but you're not eligible for this. It's just a, it's not going to work. Well, I, if there's another round of money that does come in, I would encourage you to go back out and do it again because, uh, because 
I think in the beginning, a lot of the banks didn't have answers to the questions because they didn't have all the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I based mine um, on, I'm on a Schedule C and it was owner distribution. So I got a pre-approval based on that. So I think, I think you just got to push a little bit harder it, when there's another round of money. Because obviously, obviously there's no more money. <laughs> yeah, um, that's like <laughs> Money's gone, but. Yeah, yeah. We have to find the loopholes that Ruth Chris found somehow. Um, <laughs> let's um, let's <laughs> jump over to Chris, Chris Heatherman. Um, hi, I'm Chris Heatherman and I own Painting with a Twist. I have four employees. We did not make it in time for the PPP. Um, supposedly, we have a letter from the IDLE funds um, saying that we were qualified for that, but we have yet to see any money magically appear in our account. Um, so I'm not holding my breath on that one. Um, with the governor saying that retail can open, that doesn't help us a lot because we technically probably fall under bars and restaurants as we need people to come into our building and sit down and do things. Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently doing take-home kits where people can um, come and get painting kits from us. They come with, some of them come with all of them come with excellent printed directions from our corporate. And then we have about 20 that come with corporate videos also. So we are looking at right now at once the governor lifts these of going to virtual classes. Um, our big issue right now is what is a good price point to come in at um, that will pay our bills, pay our employees. Um, and kind of take into consideration the fact that, you know, people have been out of work for a while. And that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, and are you having sales on your kits? We are having sales on our kits. Um, we know some of our sister studios are like doing way better than we are, but we've only been open two years. So, you know, our kits will at least be paying for, um, they'll pay for everything except for our rent. So it'll take care of like our insurances, our electric, our, um, cause, cause we didn't cancel any of these things. So it'll take care of all of the bills except for the rent. <laughs> so it'll take care of all those miscellaneous bills <laughs> at the moment. Mm -hmm. Just take care of our rent. Kathy, did you have a comment? Yeah, Chris, um, one of your uh, competitors um, is um, doing a uh, live virtual class. So they're charging um, fifteen dollars. Uh, basically, it's going BYO supplies, so bring your own supplies with an option of adding the pit kit paint um, add-on. Okay. Yeah, we saw that. Um, okay. So. Our, yeah, so we're just kind of, our corporate is taking that into account too, so. Okay. Um, uh, Dennis Reed. Thank you, Kathy. Um, my first. Hey, Dennis, can you I hear me out there? I, yeah, I unmuted you. Okay, well, uh, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Um, Dennis Reed, I own Seaboard Bedding and Furniture on 501 in Myrtle Beach. Um, we're a discount furniture store. Obviously, um, we were affected by the uh, shutdown, as is everybody else here. I can relate to a lot of what I'm hearing. Um, I would guess I'd have to say that while, you know, what we've all gone through is, uh, was quite depressing at times, um, there was a tremendous amount of opportunity to, to, to uh, glean from it, um, things that we never applied ourselves on. And through e-sales, virtual sales, using technology like what we're on here. And I apologize, I don't have a camera on this computer. You all can see my ugly mug. But um, so we've had some success at that level. Um, we've also, you know, looking forward to tomorrow. Um, still going to operate with some controlled, um, I think, rigid controls as far as the amount of people. We've been measuring square footage to see how many people should be in here to maintain standards. Um, and 
you know, using our kind of safety and sanitizing standards. So I'm probably more concerned of what it looks like two to three months out because my product is, you know, it's disposable income and it's not even at a, as a discounter, you buy a sofa set, that's not the cheapest outlay of cash that one has, particularly when other things could be more pressing like rent, mortgage, car payments, health insurance. Uh, I get all that. I'm going to portion of my staff choose to be laid off, basically. Um, those that I could afford to keep around, I've, I've been paying and pulled myself from payroll um, to maintain some semblance of uh, routine with the company. Um, and obviously controlling cost and advertising and everything else. Um, one of the people that pulled ads, uh, Leslie, I believe it is, it has uh, the radio stations. I think I'm actually with your company. Um, as far as the PPP goes, uh, went through the process, went through the process very early, got to the point where Infralink sent me the request for all the additional docs. Everything was loaded. I uh, pretty much did a thing as quickly as possible, but yet to actually see the word approval. Um, and then obviously the money has run out. So that's kind of my, my little story. You're muted, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Des. Kathy Strauss. Quick, there we go. Oh, quick. I got it. I, I'm on, quick, quick. I'm unmuted. Um, Kathy quick Strauss. In, yeah, quick intro and quick. Uh, uh, challenge you might have. Cool. Yeah. Um, Kathy Strauss with Imageworks, uh, photography and art um, and um, challenge. Um, like Elena, um, I have been, um, I, my main focus has always been photography, which is in person. And um, it is, um, even though it is important um, to have your marketing photography for your businesses and stuff like that, um, it is also considered a non-essential. Um, so I did a quick pivot and have finally, I got the uh, website up for my online photography class uh, with a little kick from this group of always talking about it and um, when God bold uh, with her uh, coaching group and going, You're, you got to do something. You just got to get out of your own way. So I put it out last night on uh, quickly on my own group um, and on Facebook, just one you know just a little bit and now I've just got to uh, market the heck out of it um, challenge um, getting the word out that I've got this um, and got it going um, figuring out a date um, etc for it I want to start it this coming Saturday since it is a four-week workshop um, as to funding um, <laughs> like uh, Elena we don't qualify period it's uh, um, even with the owner distribution. No, I I, I got to uh, about halfway in, and I was like, "This is not even." Um, and then I got excited when I saw that the chamber um, and the, I think it was the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce um, that just put it out. It was uh, the chamber, our Myrtle Beach area Chamber of Commerce put it out on an email that said that there was um, funding that was open um, if you have three or more employees. So Chris Heatherman, do this immediately. Um, that, you know, they would be, it would be for supporting. So I am, um, I looked at this and if you, um, consider um, myself an employee my husband who is walking around in the background right over there is as an employee that's fine that's two I have no dogs anymore I have no rabbits although they're running around in the ducks and all that other stuff I can't consider them an employee I'm sorry um, I think what I'm trying to do also is that I've been talking to some of my BNI people um, and a lot of the things that BNI now is encouraging is um, uh, headshot photography because they want to see people's mugs on these pre on the presentation. So um, I'm going to start talking about, listen, book me now. When this all lifts, we're going to have a big, huge headshot day. We can do wherever you would like if we're still doing a social distancing and everything like that. But I'm thinking, you know, talk to me now um, and book me now with the retainer 
And if things get really bad, I'll refund the retainer. We'll, we'll put it in a savings account and everything like that for you. Um, but if you book me now, um, we, we can move forward with anything with the photos. And that's my story. And I'm also helping out with um, SOS Healthcare on uh, some creative fundraising um, stuff. So I'm looking for art from artists can be either local or it can be um, out of the area. So that's kind of great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Kathy Redwine. Yes, there you are. <laughs> um, I am Kathy Redwine. Um, I am a counselor and a podcast host. Um, and it's been really interesting. And, and honestly, I've just been sitting back and listening to all of you. I'm in a little bit of a different vein because um, fortunately, Medicaid is is rising up and they're paying us to do um, therapy, which is great because so many people are going to need it. Um, and I, I guess that that was something that I almost wanted to check in with all of you on is how is everybody doing? Like, are, are you guys, <laughs> and Gina, I totally don't mean to turn it into that, but I wonder if there is I don't know if there are ways that your business, if there are things that you can do to promote all of these as outlets, because we do get so bogged down with all of the stress of everything else and the painting with a twist and like emphasizing the fact that this is a wonderful coping skill for you, your family, for everybody. Um, I just was thinking, you know, because I, I think all of us are going to need as much strength, mental and physical, to get through all of these things. Um, so that's that's my story, Gina. Um, and I'm just trying to stay as busy as I can. I actually am still seeing some people over Zoom, which has been really interesting, um, learning a lot in this whole process. But I am here to help in any way that I can for whatever anybody is going through, even if it's just for some brainstorming. <laughs> well, thank you. That um, you know, I, I invite Kathy to be on these because she she can be our um, in-house counselor um, because I do think that there is a lot of stress involved. Um, I do produce Kathy's new podcast, Dealing and Feeling, which you need to check out. And uh, she was checking in on me this morning and I said, boy, I'm, I didn't sleep at all last night. My heart rate's high. And um, she's like, do you think it's, do you think it's anxiety? And I'm like, I feel fine, but maybe deep down inside, it's just kind of, you know, just kind of staying deep down inside that's creating these other symptoms. Um, so Kathy, you had mentioned sending me some activities to work on. So, yes. so, so maybe that's something that you can share with the group um, in general oh. for if anyone is feeling some anxiety or don't even realize that you're feeling anxiety. And, you know, you keep, we keep pushing through, right? Because entrepreneurs and business owners, we are um, resilient or if you're in sales, you got to be resilient and you got to push through. Um, and we kind of put on a veneer that we got this. Um, and Dennis and I have talked about that. Hashtag we got this. Well, sometimes we don't got this. We just have convinced ourselves that we got this. So maybe that's something, Kathy, you could share with the group. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. And I mean, I think just to, important to remember about anxiety. So um, I'll give like my two second spiel. Our anxiety is based in the fear center of our brain, which is the amygdala. And when that amygdala gets flooded, it sends messages to that frontal lobe to shut down, which is where we manage our emotions, where all of our executive functioning happens. But it doesn't mean that the fear center is not experiencing fear. It's still happening. We're just shoving it into other places. 
And so I think a lot of times people experience panic attacks, not because of a panic that they are dealing with in that moment, because of all of the shelving that we've done of those emotional challenges. So I think the biggest thing that we've got to do is make sure that we're checking in with ourselves, myself included. I mean, this has been stressful. I have two kids at home that are doing homeschool, so that's really interesting. <laughs> um, and, you know, I do have some worksheets that I'm going to send to Gina. And Gina, you're welcome to send them out to everybody. I mean, awesome. they're really about... Um, self-exploration, um, kind of finding out the why and where some of your stress, anxiety, fear, um, depression, any of that stuff's coming from, and then coming up with a coping skill that you can help with that. I've also been posting on the Dealing and Feeling um, Facebook page and Instagram page weekly videos with some different skills that are applicable for both young people as well as adults. Um, so I'll be happy to, you know, share all of that kind of stuff because I think that it's a legitimately challenging time for everyone for such a variety of reasons. And if we are not being honest with ourselves, it's going to catch up with us later. So do work now be in a moment of pain, have that deep emotional break, but then you can pull yourself out of it. We got this is awesome because there's such a great level of positivity to it, but we also have to be honest with the fact that some days we don't got this. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm, I'll be happy to, and Gina has all of my information, um, to happy to share with any of you guys, if there's anything that I can, I can do. And, um, somebody had mentioned something about the chamber. Yeah. I'm speaking on a webinar for the Georgetown chamber next week. Um, so I don't, you know, on mental health, because I do think that they're all, so I'll figure out whatever that is and I can send it. Hey, Kathy message, I'll message you. Um, okay. okay, I'm an ambassador with the chamber. Mm. Okay. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. And um, Kathy Redwine, if you want to put in the chat the um, um, web address or Facebook address, they're kind of one in the same of the podcast. So people can go there as a resource. And um, I will also, when I post a recording for this meeting, I'll, I'll post those, um, your activities and the link to that so people can because especially if any of you have kids um especially if you have kids kathy can be a really good resource with what's going on right now so thanks for that um let's jump over to sherry for her introduction and what she's got going on and then i want to do a quick go around because i have some just kind of like quick thoughts and ideas for each of you. And then everybody can kind of jump in and share with each other, maybe some thoughts that you have for each other. So Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry Glensky and I, <clears throat> excuse me, I write for South Carolina Woman. I write about restaurants. So of course I'm not working right now and just trying to uh, plan for the future when we all open up. And uh, I'm a little late to the party this morning. I apologize because I went on a wild goose chase to Merle's Inlet. I had ordered something that I was to help out a small business that they had in stock and I drove down there from North Myrtle and they didn't have it without letting me know. So, um, so anyway, I ended up stopping at Benjamin's helping one of your clients, Leslie, bought some stuff. Um, it's just a frustrating time now and uh, you know, just wait until it all opens up and I just the emotions of everybody. Even in the store, I stopped at another store and they had the arrows walking around and I parked my cart and just backed up for a moment. Some old lady yelled at me, you can't do that. I just think everybody just has to chill. And I think, Kathy Redwine, <laughs> your stuff can really help a lot of people. Um, so um, the owner of the magazine actually did apply for the PPP, but didn't get anywhere with it. And she doesn't have any employees, we're all 1099. So I think we have to do our own thing, but... Um, that that's my story right now. Thank you. So I want to do a um, kind of a quick go around the things that came to my head to throw around to everybody. Um, Leslie, is there anything that you guys are doing 
I know you're probably trying to sell and it's hard to sell because no one's got money to buy. Are there any programs in place to, I don't want to say give things away for free, but <laughs> <laughs> trade stuff out. This is another thing Dennis and I were talking about yesterday. Um, I posted this also in our group. Um, a lot of us don't have the resources to market ourselves and you're hearing a lot of that. We don't have the money to market ourselves to drive revenue when we need to drive revenue. We might not drive it immediately, but it's interesting seeing different like TV commercials running and radio commercials running. People are still doing something because they know that they have to stay top of mind for when things do open back up. So are there any opportunities for you guys to be doing that? Or are you already doing it? Yeah, we do do trade, um, depending on what it is. Um, so if you have a business that um, we can kind of barter for ads. We also have a discount website called um, greatdealsmyrtlebeach.com. And that's where businesses can sign up. Um, you can offer goods or services, um, give the certificates to us. We sell them at half price. We give you, and it starts out at a $2,500 minimum. You know, we give you $2,500 in ads for $2,500 in trade, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we sell it at half price and we keep that half price money and that's how we get paid. So that's okay. another one that we have available as well. So something like, you know, painting with a twist, you know, you could um, sign up and be part of that um, website, get that exposure, and then you don't have to use the ads right away. Um, you, you, you can use them at your discretion. Um, so that's something that, that um, some businesses might want to consider as well. You know, and I do have businesses that are currently open and operating, and, you know, I'm very blessed to be able to still be able to help them. You know, um, Gray Man Spirits, liquor store sales are up you know this is a really good time for them right now yeah um yeah. benjamin's bakery is still open doing the curbside um pickup takeout um you know several different services where you can benefit from that online exposure because we have a whole online division as well where we can do um email blasts and um geofencing targeted display ads uh narrowing down um your potential clients by demographics mm -hmm. so a lot of different things that we can do but you know as far as something that might help other businesses that might not have the money to advertise um, those couple of options um are very good you know i've traded with a florist before we wanted to get christmas gifts out to our clients so we traded poinsettias for ads you know um Gina, something um, like your business, you know, when we, we do um, have sales meetings where we might do team building type of um, events where we go out and about. Oh, so, I, 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 yeah, I plan on hitting, I plan on hitting you up for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all, on, I'm all on board. Yeah. I was like, oh, I just wrote that one down. So I'm, I'm wondering if you're using that, um, if you're pulling that tool out of your bag right now and going out to get some business, even though it's not direct cash, um, it might be a way to bring in new clients that might be new to radio or new to you. And this gives them an opportunity to measure to see if it works. Um, so I just, I haven't really been pushing that to be honest with you, but um, that's a good idea. Just kind of a tool to bring in some new blood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Katrina, my, um, some of my comments and thoughts for you just from my personal experience, um, for us being in the Myrtle Beach mall, the mall's closed. And so our biggest challenge has been the fact that they asked us to pay rent in April. And my response was, I get it that you have to pay a mortgage and stuff, but we're not allowed into our space. So um, that is a huge challenge. And even when we do get open, um, we're not gonna have money the second that we open. And our challenge is gonna be a little bit different than most merchants because we are in improv comedy theater and we're a, um, um, a public place of gathering. 
So we have an even bigger challenge. So when you look at what they're talking about in the phases of rolling out, if you can only have 20% 20 20 of your square footage of people in their space, I've already done the calculation. That means I can only have 10 customers come to a show, um, yeah. even if we do get open. So that was a huge challenge for us. Um, one of my big recommendations, and it's not necessarily going to help you from a, getting the rent paid perspective, um, communication is key. Um, and constantly communicating to tenants. That's my biggest complaint about where I am. There has been no communication other than we need you to pay your rent. And yeah. it leaves us in the dark of like... Right. Yeah, well, a lot of our, um, you know, uh, deferrals or anything like that, we're trying to work with especially, you know, privately owned businesses, you know, national tenant that's handled on a whole other scale. And, and even any kind of deferral and everything has to go to my corporate office, you know, for approval and everything. And, and even then they sometimes still don't have the money for that. But, you know, I, I have been given the license to be able to say, well, sit tight, we're working with you. You know, we're not going to, you, know, yeah. you know, of course, a lot of small businesses, and especially if they've not been in business a long time, expect for you to give them that rent for free um, and, and, you know, that just, that just can't happen. Um, but you can work, you know, we are trying to work with people and, um, I'm sure they'd like to get answers faster, you know, and everything like that, but we've got 65 balls around, you know, the country. So sometimes it takes them a week to get that letter of what we're offering to help them do. And they get a little impatient, but everybody I think has been really gracious that I've been trying to work with too. Um, that's so it, there's, their success is our success and that's really our mentality on that. Yeah, that's great. Great. Maybe, maybe I should move over to your mall. Well, we can always talk about that. <laughs> Eventually we're, we have to find a new place anyway. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I have vacancies. You guys can all walk in here and see that there's vacancies and everything like that. But, you know, just like, um, you know, there's, there's opportunity with vacancies too. That's how your tenant mix changes. That's how new things come about. That's how new ideas come out there. So, um, I wonder, here's a crazy idea. I wonder with, with some of your vacancies, if you can, I know it's going to be a bigger corporate thing for you to deal with. Um, I'm wondering if you can use some vacancy to highlight other businesses in the area that are not necessarily tenants, but um, as, as a goodwill kind of yeah, I don't know how much that would go because, of course, their our task is also to generate revenue because even even with working with tenants, there are going to be some that just can't pay. So, yeah, um, typically, you know, there's a advertising type fee or, or whatever for a lot of yeah. that stuff. So, you know, I, I don't know the uh, you know the ideas are always out there and, and being tossed around. Um, yeah, maybe even just like um, not necessarily. Um, giving someone a, a free space to stay in, but, but maybe having more of, um, what am I trying to say? Like a, a, a spotlight on business and you have yeah. several businesses in there for a weekend. Right. Um, yeah. and, um, and they all get to set up a little bit. Yeah. We're, um, uh, we're looking at an idea and we were looking at that before then we have in some of our other properties of what they call a pop-up, a pop-up shop. Yeah. And we basically have it completely out there we have fixtures, everything. And so, you know, uh, a retailer that might be online only wants to come out and kind of experience what it would be like to actually, you know, operate inside of the mall and they can come out and do that for like a week at a time, you know, or something like that. And then they can learn, you know, Hey, it's really hard to staff from 10 to nine or, it, you know, or, Hey, we needed more merchandise, you know, or, and things like that. So that will be coming in the future. That was in the works anyway. And mm -hmm. that gives, people an opportunity to kind of get out there and, and see if this is, you know, a place they need to be or just get their name out there, you know, during high traffic times or something like that and just to promote their online business. So, Okay. Well, that's good to know. But we tried to stay open, you know, just to the facility open, you know, I guess it's a loophole. It never specifically said to close malls and, you know, and the governor's order said they could keep, you know, filling online orders and everything like that. So, we worked really hard to make sure that our tenants had um, access to their units that they're paying for during this time. That's good. 
Um, I wish I could say I had access to my unit. Um, Dennis, I had something for you and now I just forgot what it was. Oh, it's going to come back to me. Something we spoke about yesterday? Well, yeah, I mean, we could talk about that. I mean, there was something else that I might wanted be to... A little, that might be a little more lengthy than the time you have allotted. Yeah, I mean, we can... I got um, some notes here I can touch on, though, that might be some use. Maybe it'll jog your mind, jog your yeah. memory. Yeah, but there was like a suggestion I had for your store, and I know I can't remember for the life of me what Well, yesterday, it... the inventory control aspect. Yeah, there's inventory. Oh, oh, for you, because well, you're talking about down two, three, two, three months down the road, um, and people are not really focused on spending money on furniture. Um, a couple other thoughts is pushing on your financing program, if that's an option for you. I know that's how I oh, bought yeah. my my. That's how I bought my recent purchase from you. Was going. That through. is, I mean. That's part of it. Like I just jotted a few things as everybody was going around. I try to keep it brief, but uh, and obviously ecom and I never was. We were brick and mortar, so we're trying to reach out into that phase, and that'll just lend you to doing the financing and trying to keep people at home to make as many decisions. We just did a speech today. I did with the, the team of just analyzing business and looking for the low hanging fruit. Meaning, how do you make it most convenient for someone? to secure financing, to see the furniture without actually having to leave the house and come in the building. And mm -hmm. it'll create some efficiency. It should create better customer service. And the real idea there was to kind of create a, a, vert, a, a personal virtual shopper where everybody's special in the sense where it's not just somebody wealthy has a personal shopper that goes out and buys their clothes or their furniture or whatever and try to do that for every person. We're having success at that level. Um, so that's, that's been huge on the mental side, which I can be quite mental, um, and years of, you know, kind of winter depression or the blues haven't had it so much the last two years since the drastic change in diet, believe it or not. But, um, I always harken back to a story I heard once about folks after a hurricane raking their yard with a tree that in this, going down the center of their roof. And it's like, why would a man or a woman be raking their yard when their house it's got a hole in it. And the sense of it was, that's what you can control right now. That's the one thing you can control right now. So I've adopted that. I, this goes back to my time at Coastal in, a, I guess, a survey site course that I took. I found that very interesting. and I remembered that throughout my life because um, it's so easy and panic and depression and things like that could creep into life if kind of focused on the periphery as opposed to what you actually got dead center in front of you. And I'm doing that with projects on the business, which are renovations, but not like renovations with a big bankroll. I'm talking being frugal and just how do I make this thing look a little bit better when the customer gets to come in the first time with no restriction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing it with my staff. How have you know the, the hour long we spent this morning talking about low hanging fruit and not so much just plucking a sale, but just I was looking at it in terms of just convenience for the consumer. I was like, who wants to run around? To, I mean, some people may enjoy going to furniture stores. I own one, and it's not a great pleasure of mine. Um, so I would like to have it nice and simple and straight when I decided I need X, Y, or Z. So there's been some definite outreach with my staff at these of training. And on a personal level, um, and then things like this, these webinars, um, that's been huge for me to keep sanity. And then when all that is said and done, I'm finding the cheapest, most simplest thing that's akin to raking leaves or sticks after a hurricane in my house or my yard at some point and sometime during the day. Before you arrived yesterday, I was planting flowers that I had grown from seed or whatever. It's simple, simple stuff, feeding the fish. And, you, who knows what? I know that sound might sound a little weird, but um, it's actually c kept me sane. And for the main reason is I'm accountable to 13 other people and their families. And there's a lot of questions you have to answer. And, you know, if you start getting it, it's any human tendency to get a little short, particularly when you're dealing with all the stuff in the back of your head about covering rent and everything else and 
what's the governor saying and what's happening with the virus and here become the kind of conduit of inform- information for everybody. So it's like, if I don't have that personal time, I'm not going to be who I want to be when they need me the best. Yep. Or no, the most, a, I should say. It's a leadership issue. Yeah, I've been, it's actually provided me with a great opportunity to work on it. Um, I would also say for some, a lot of people seem to be 1099. And I started my business out that way as a company of one in a storage unit about 13 years ago. So I totally relate. It is so unfair because you generate income, you generate wealth, you generate commerce, and then all of a sudden you reflect it upon in a different way um, when things like this happen. You know, none of us, even if even in my current structure, I'm not eligible for unemployment ever. Um, but I would say, I don't know if this thing will ever happen again or something akin to it, that, you know, speak to a CPA at some point. I went with an LLC S-Corp designate. There's no extra work except for one additional tax return, but it does allow me to be an employee, easy provable loss of income, at least on a salary level or the hourly level or however you want to pay yourself and and allows you to put some money in the till as far as your, you know, instead of doing quarterly income tax, because you can do it week by week or biweekly with the payroll. That was huge for me about four years ago because I had to learn the hard way. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I um I just moved to LLC S Corp for 2020. And um why someone didn't tell me to do that like 11 years ago? I don't know, but it it it, it may have been a thing to help me with the PPP pre-approved. Um, again, I'm like I don't want to count on it. Um it was just strange timing kind of that I moved to it this year. Uh, but based my submission for the loans are based on um, owner distribution. So I don't know if that made a, a difference, but to your point, um, putting yourselves on payroll um, also helps, helps a little bit more with attempting to collect unemployment, not necessarily, um, but it's definitely a better structure, I think, to be in. I agree. Um, and the other thing, uh, Dennis, I know you and I were talking yesterday about doing some sales training with your staff, which I know we're going to make that happen. I think some of the spin that you could be using with them is, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a great reality. A lot of people are not going to spend money on vacation. Um, I know we're, you know, people are saying, oh, Myrtle Beach will be an affordable place and we're going to see tourism continue. Um, I'm not 100% feeling that. Uh, I just listened to the mayor's, I don't know if anybody listened to their emergency meeting. They just had an emergency meeting and they're not sounding as positive about their concerns about reopening too soon and us having another surge, not in October, but in actual July or August, because we're going to have people coming down from New York. So, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about whether or not we're actually gonna, like, part of me is like, just say goodbye to 2020 is how I feel a little bit, like not count on it. But the reality is people are going to be probably staying home more. And so their homes are going to be really important to them. And that could be part of the, part of the sell in some way that you're not, uh, you're not going on vacation. So you're staycationing in your amazing house with this lovely living room set. I don't know, some, something along those lines, if that makes sense. Totally. And I agree. And that's why I kind of, tagged along with the personal virtual shopper even if you are here local and could come there if i can cut a lot of that work out for you how much more convenient is it and save you money in the process yeah. it times money um for for everybody yeah, so, yeah I, I agree with p- that. P- positioning it as um you can't really afford a vacation but you hear something less than a vacation you know that's going to last longer i don't know we could we could work that out in sales training cool I already used yes and for, yes and for the first time this morning with my team. Awesome. awesome. Yay. Um, do you want to share a little bit about what you and I had been talking about yesterday? Yeah, I don't want to run you late, but just I get crazy ideas, as I told Gina yesterday, and 
and one of the ones I had was, you know, and I, I hope it still becomes an opportunity, but I think everybody that supports the community by running a business, going through these trying times, normal business has trying times, seasonality has trying times, all of it. Um, and I know a lot of us, I'm included, it's easy to click on Amazon versus know who my local business is that could provide me some of the same services or products um, because it's just kind of the way life is. And so the idea was to create some sort of forum website group, which kind of rephrases, reframes what small business is. And I mean real small business, not these 500 employee small businesses that get to the trough first when it comes to PPP loans. I'm talking about one, two, three, ten employees and so on, locally owned restaurants. And the money that's in that does come, if it comes, and even if it's just unemployment or the twelve hundred dollars, is organizing ourselves in such a fashion by county that we could formulate a loose BNI without all the restrictions. And some of the phraseology I'm toying toying with is not referring to us as small business owners, but neighbors. And kind of a meet your neighbor section on this where people like yourselves would be interviewed, your story, where you come from, why you do what you do, why you, why you love your product, what you have to offer, et cetera. Also a promotion portion of the site. Um, also a community involvement portion of the site where if someone on here is doing, I know there's some artists on here, photographers, all artists, and you're doing something one afternoon that you're like, I really like to get behind a certain cause. And maybe it's, the lesson is, you know, kind of uh, an in-person Patreon type thing where you actually donate to learn a little bit. I love photography. Most of mine's done on an iPhone, but I love it. And to learn some tricks and stuff. And you said, kick in what you can kick in. All this goes towards so-and-so or the fee is this. And a portion of it goes to so-and-so, which is local and in our county. Um, and then the site would host all that so we would know what each other are doing to support each other um, in those efforts and support each other in knowing about ourselves introducing you know it's kind of like the the website business card bulletin board that I used to have in my store or someone needed a painter or carpenter or this or that I could just pull a card down and hand it but we would have it here to live forever on the internet um, and then the barter system portion, which has come out of this call, and I think we touched on it, but to even offer that type of concept, is to have it all one place, zero fee forever for members. This is not a money maker. You can throw up a donate button for those who feel like they can, leave a couple of bucks and they're out the door kind of a thing. Um, if it generates some income, if it becomes popular, if it franchises to other counties or whatever, there's obviously maybe the political element to it where you can keep it local and we throw our support the way we feel needed to help us. Um, it could be if there is any finance or fundraising that happens that actually profits the group, perhaps there's some kind of scholarship, if you will, for lack of a better word, that can be thrown out to small businesses. Also, would enable yourself to have some coaching and training like what Gina's producing here. So that's my crazy idea. Well, I, I like the idea and you and I were kind of bouncing some ideas off of each other. One of the things that um, uh, we refer to like talking about customers as guests, just like they do in hospitality and mm -hmm. talking about neighbors um, and referring to our neighbors, not just um, the small businesses, but the people who patronize our small businesses. The thing that really got me. Can I touch on that neighbor? Because I didn't get that. And the reason I chose the word neighbor is because, like even in my neighborhood, some people are employed, retired, some own other small businesses. Small businesses are neighbors in variety and variety in all these different neighborhoods. Kids go to the same schools with other people. You think about it, if you could talk about a small business as a neighbor versus as a revenue generating, you know, brick and mortar location or whatever. And that's how we would introduce ourselves. Um, to each other as far in, 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 and to the additional local public, you know? Um, so that, I thought that was key, just like the term guest. Yeah. Um, 
and the other thing that resonated with with me lately with what we're dealing with um especially the 1099 businesses and so proprietors um and there is and if you want that i know the chamber sent it out if you didn't see it there is a link for like the newest loan that you can apply for that kathy strauss um suggested for for chris to do um that is only eligible you're only eligible if, if you have a minimum of three employees and so again we have here we go again um i really want to find out the statistics i'm like bent on this now what are the statistics of you know businesses that have one and two employees or have less than 20 employees what is the percentage of those businesses because these are the mom and pop businesses that are keeping you know, contributing to economy as well. So do we need, do we need some kind of organization or group or place to funnel those businesses that, you know, I, I get, I get irritated over this Ruth Chris thing and there, you know, 500 people is considered a small business. Okay, so maybe we need a new catchphrase. Maybe there's small, medium, large, but there's also the micro business. I don't know, a new term and some way to organize that niche of business into something. I don't know, it's just kind of what Dennis and I were talking about yesterday um, and trying to find ways to merge, merge some of those ideas. So that's something that I'm playing with of, of maybe we need another organization or association or something that takes what we're doing here and I don't know, organize it. I don't know if I'm making my, if I'm, if I'm making sense. Um, so more to come on that from, from Dennis and I that we're working on. Um, jumping around just from a, I know Kathy, you're talking about pushing out your, your, um, your online stuff. Um, I would suggest that you get with Leslie and see if there's something that you and Leslie can do together to help you get that promoted. Yeah. And I, and I don't know if there's something that Sherry can do to help you get that promoted. Um, you know, again, from an advertising perspective, uh, you know, there are ways that you, you guys can continue to help your community. Sherry, I know you focus on restaurants, but you might have to think outside of the box and, and focus on other things, like maybe some of these types of businesses that can actually provide some mental sanity for people right now and help promote those businesses. Um, just some crazy random thoughts. Leslie O'Neill, I know you're on and you're listening. Did you want to say something or ask something or participate? No, I'm good today, Gina. I just, um, I got on late, so I'm really not that prepared. I just wanted to hop on and connect and, and listen to what everybody cool. has to say. So next time. Thank you, though. Okay, awesome. Um, would anybody now like to throw in any ideas or thoughts um, or suggestions for anybody else on the call? Um, one thing, um, you just brought up the word micro entrepreneur or micro business that talk about a flashback when I worked for the World Bank back in my uh, youth, um, actually tw I worked for them for 20 years. One of the programs was um, that I worked on and helped them with training materials for was it was called uh, um, women as an entrepreneur and they were all micro businesses and they were all micro loans that was mm -hmm. it and yes. so it, it the, the terminology is around I'm not sure whether it's here around here in the the US but it is in um, internationally at least in the third world uh, developing countries yeah. I just feel like we need to band together to actually put more spotlight on the fact that there are businesses that um, are small, but don't have 500 employees. Yes. Or three employees. <laughs> or three employees. That's okay. exactly right. We're solopreneurs. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to give some input to another business or ask another question? Is this helpful just coming back to the virtual water cooler? 
Oh yeah. So it's very helpful. And I know Katrina, this was your first time. You kind of want to get perspective, but you're, you're always welcome to jump on and, and come and get perspective or give us your perspective. I mean, I'm sure that there are ideas that you can give to us um, from a bigger picture of, of having so many tenants. We want to come to your mall, Katrina. <laughs> we want you to come to our mall. So. <laughs> you have a mall in Washington State? <laughs> I'm trying to I really want to leave my current trend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to reach out to tenants right now to see um, who, who may try to reopen this week um, and things like that. A lot of my national tenants, the emails are getting kicked back back to me right now because I think a lot of their employees are on furlough. So even when it is a national tenant, you know, they employ a local person. So it's just, it's just difficult. But, you know, a lot of our sole proprietor type stores, they, they too, you know, it's a husband and wife team and maybe an employee or two that works for them. And, and, you know, like I said, their success is ours. So, if, you know, if they've missed out on this money because, you know, somebody with 400 employees, you know, received it, you know, that's just going to hurt them right now. And it's just, it's, it's tough to see and watch. Um, but, you know, like, hopefully we can all be in this together and work through it and come out stronger one day for it. But I know that's hard to even think about right now, but. Yeah. Um, Katrina, what, I've got your email address, but what's your phone number? I'm um, 843-353-5655. Okay, great. And I know one of one of uh, your tenants, uh, Apricot um, Lane, um, is one of my uh, member investors for the with the chamber, yeah. and she actually just um, launched like a virtual fashion show um, the the other day. Uh, I mean, she was stressing. I mean, really stressing. Yes, she she's uh, you know been in business less than two years. I think shortly after she got open, we had a hurricane, and you know, and everything. That's what she told me. They're trying so hard, and the store is beautiful, and we love them. Um, so we're just working through it the best way we can. Yeah. Um, before we go, Chris Heatherman, I don't think I have your email address. Could you uh, put that in the chat, or you can send it to me at Gina at pivot10results.com. This way, um, what I'm trying to do is get really good at making sure that I get the Zoom info out to you guys every um, great, thank you that I get it out to you every Monday morning. I know some of you are able to register on the um, Chamber website, which thank you for, to the Myrtle Beach Chamber for continuing to promote this. Um, looks like we're going to have a long run, so I will continue these through May. Of course, we have another call next Monday, so I'm trying to stay on top of making sure I email everybody as a reminder that the call is happening. And if you guys have nothing else, we will... We will I have call. one question yeah. for Terry. Sure. You should done since she's still here. And I know you mentioned earlier that you're not uh, riding on restaurants a lot because of all the closures and everything. But is there anything else, any other kind of story content that would help you right now put things out there other than restaurants? Or are you looking to other contents and topics right now what 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 would help you well uh thanks yes the problem is we're not going to press with the next issue um most of the clients are closed so the uh, publisher made a decision we're going to skip the next which is two months but i'm happy to share on our facebook page i'm still managing that and if people want to share something i'm looking for stories primarily restaurants good stories i mean i don't post anything negative on our facebook page uh, except I just heard that Chuck's is closing. They said they're not even going to reopen when this is happening. I'll share something. No. I know it's horrible. I, they're older. Maybe that's it. They wanted to retire. Um, but if I, I do see stories about things going on with food. I post it. I'd be happy to share anything else anybody wants me to share. This, uh, Sherry, just a, just a thought. Um, I know that, um, you know, like Donald Hovis is doing all the little photos for all going out to the different restaurants and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Is there any way that I know that he has a partnership with you guys? Is there any way that he can tag along that you can tag team with the photos and you could do a review of the takeout food? 
you know, that, that type of stuff, something different. Mm -hmm. Do it on Facebook. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, uh, yeah, it's something to think about. See, brainstorming, Gina, brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be good with my social distancing because my daughter in Maryland's giving me a lot of crap for even walking out of the house. <laughs> well, you could, you could also, you could also put something out there, Sherry, um, asking people to give you input about where they've gotten takeout. How good or how bad it is. There you I go. I've been hearing some of that. I have been. I, I yeah. see. Like I said, I see stories Perhaps. and share them. So I'm De doing some of that. Dennis, were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, I used to be in the restaurant business 17 years um, prior to this. Um, if I still had one now and you had uh, reached out to me, said, send me some of your takeout food and I'll critique it, write about it, packaging, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, as a real end user of it timing the whole bit yeah how easy it was to order etc might be a neat little um that's a great track idea. for you to stay okay. in your home and you'll get some free food out of the deal and you'll eat <laughs> that's what hey. i not to do during this time <laughs> sherry um another thing what i you found with a neighbor <laughs> um sherry one of the things that i found was this in-home chef service Mm -hmm. um, you may be familiar with it, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, <laughs> but they, they break, basically bring their chefs into your home. They'll do like a plated meal, et cetera, and then also they do large events and things like that, but what they're doing right now is offering meals, and they're delivering them. They've hired hospitality workers to deliver the meals. Yeah, that's MK, MK um, Scratch. Yeah, I know you're oh. talking about Okay. Yeah, I mean, their I'm meals fine. are like 26 to $28 for like, that feeds six to eight people for this really nice chicken piccata and, you know, pretty, yeah. uh, pretty cool stuff that they're offering. Yeah. Um, I had another thought, but it went away. It, this is <laughs> the Monday. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, question for everybody. So Leslie, I would like, Leslie Maloney, I would like to share your information about different things that you shared with us about how people could get more exposure with your radio stations. Sure. Um, Kathy, if you want to promote out, um, your on, your online stuff that's going to start if basically yep. anybody here wants to do a promote or mention what we've talked about here about your own businesses mm -hmm. email me because i'll send out a follow-up email to the group that's growing from this but i'll also put it in the facebook group as like resources to promote what's going on with your businesses so <laughs> You have my email address, you should. Um, I'm not sure if Chris does, but it's Gina at pivot10results.com. And I don't think Dennis, I have your email, but I'm not sure, but I'll just walk over to your house. Um, well, it's, um, just Dennis at Seaboard Betting, it's easy. Dennis at Seaboard Betting. Dot com. Great. So um, again, if you want me to share that out on the- um, sure. Facebook page, Actually, Any, anything you guys have to share, I'll share out. Well, I, I would have you share this to the folks on this call. If you want to hit them with an email, I was able to get my hands on some face masks. Oh. I'm willing to share, not sell. Um, so if you want, you know, like a half a dozen or so, you can contact me directly. Don't necessarily know I can deliver them, but if you were able to get up around this area, I'd be able to, um, get you some we're going to be doing that for our customers and hopefully by the end of the week i i cash out a portion of my retirement of um, my um, ira and um, i'm invested in the community and decided to acquire roughly two thousand bottles of hand sanitizer mm. that a mm -hmm. broker had so i will have those coming too and if you need a bottle for the house your employee um you can hit me up with email okay great Uh, do you want me to Again, share? No, you, no charge. No, no charge at all for that. Do you want me to share that in the Facebook group or just to the email list I have? You, you could do it to all the members of your group of, you know, those local yeah. Myrtle Beach. I'll be putting something on my page. I'm hoping to have it all together and then just 
announce it for the public. Um, just, you know, at will, whoever can come by and, and, and once you get something. Okay, great. I just great. don't know when the sanitizer is arriving. I'm hoping by Friday. I'll, I'll be by at happy hour for a, a mask. <laughs> How do you drink with a mask on? Huh? How do you drink with a mask on? Oh. Put a straw. Right, you know, there's a little tiny <laughs> hole right here, and then you get a colorful straw and you sip. Yeah. Um, yes, Chris, the, the number is spelled out. So it's pivot one zero results.com. That's my email. All right, thanks everybody for your participation and your suggestions. Hope this was helpful, if anything, um, just to start your week off and. Um, Hopefully see all of you back here next Monday. Sounds good. Thank you, Gina, for doing right. this. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Welcome.